My presentation won't directly focus on the political elephant in our midst, but I hope in performatively showcasing my fellow presenters and my own cinematic efforts that we might offer our collective as an alternative to our present circus state of America. My work will look back on some of our past video performances and offer a way of thinking about the style and content of that work in terms of the circus. Precedent for our work includes the multimedia masquerades of Gregory L. Ulmer, Victor Batanza's celebration of three ring circuses in academic journals like Pretext, Sarah Arroyo's recent Big Top publication, Participatory Composition, and the carnivalized happenings of Jeff Sirk. As will be clear, we were inspired by them all. But now is no time for lengthy literature reviews. A circus is what's happening now. Step right up. Enjoy our four wonders from the four corners of the world. In preparing for Portland, always already beyond the proposal, I discovered that our collective childhoods, geographies, and past work together might be brought together cinematically through the circus. Through a Facebook group called Vanished Hillsdale, I discovered the site of the hospital where I was born was once called Linwood Farms. In the late 1800s, Linwood Farms used to host the Ringling and Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. As I grew up on Linwood Street, across from the hospital, I only now realize that I grew up on the grounds of clowns, elephants, jugglers, and this was really a surprise, Buffalo Bill's Wild West Show, featuring the likes of Annie Oakley. As it happens, our own cinematic sharpshooter, Bonnie, grew up on the site of a circus as well in Sarasota, Florida. It's the winter home of the Ringling Brothers, and in an uncanny discovery, I learned that her family was friends with the members of the Flying Walindas, the high wire act of that show. Amy, too, being born on Lakeview Avenue in Anaheim, was just down the road from Disneyland and the Flying Dumbo Ride. And while Bahare had no immediate memories of the circus in Tehran, it's worth noting that Iran's ban on the cruel treatment of elephants anticipates the recent clothing of the Ringling Brothers Circus. But introductions aside, let me show you how the circus might serve as a useful relay for approaching our early, earlier cinematic creations and collaborations together. I lead with my circus connections, if only to give rising drama to the remainder of this presentation when I turn to Bonnie, Amy, and Bahare's respective videos. Briefly, I want to say how my video scholarship owes a great deal to my hometown of Hillsdale, Michigan. It's a place I often return. It is, after all, the place where I remember my first movie, Stallone's Rocky. I saw it with my parents at the local drive-in. I was seven. 35 years later, I would remix Rocky for my Thrilla in Manila mashup for the 2012 C's in Seattle. In the 2013 MLA, I would help organize a video panel based on another Hillsdale staple of the 70s and 80s, pinball machines. My late father, H. Paul Carter, was a director and actor at the Sauk Theater, which was once part of the Sauk Indian Trail. This trail basically stretches from Hillsdale to Lakeshore Drive in Chicago. My dad loved the Sauk Theater. He told the best stories about it. What a shock it was to discover that Buffalo Bill's theatrics were not only performed close to the Sauk Trail, they were basically performed on the very property of my childhood home. My dad, a high school history teacher in North Adams, would have found this very interesting, perhaps even a little disturbing. For Buffalo Bill, as everyone knows, is a deeply problematic showman of the American West. General Custer, who was from Monroe, Michigan, by the way, shared, if not inspired, many of Buffalo Bill's racist and colonialist views on the native people. They were friends, after all. But Custer's and Bill's native revisionist history is not lost on me. You see, I have long admired Greg Ulmer's My Story Experiment, Derrida at the Little Bighorn, from his 1989 book, Teletheory. There, Ulmer tarries with growing up 
in Miles City, Montana, next to the site of the Custer Massacre. This work, of course, prefigures Ulmer's later memorial effort. Recently, Sean Morey's remarkable 2016 Kairos video, The Deepwater Horizon Roadkill Tollbooth, extends Ulmer's visions. If my circus work could do the same, I would look even more closely at Ulmer's Little Bighorn. I would take a specific image, like Ulmer's dust jacket cover that features Derrida's hand drawing of a cribble, sieve, or foley, and remix it further. For it's this drawing that Ulmer connects to the three-layered grid that his own father, Walt, used to size rocks at his sand and gravel plant. It is also a drawing that Ulmer and Derrida connect to the concept of Korra. If there were more time, perhaps I would more thoroughly remix this sieve image with the Trevois, a netted frame that Native Americans used to drag behind their horses. For in the terms of my own history, my story, I have only recently discovered that on the site I was born and raised is also a burial ground. A young Indian boy was kicked and killed by a horse while he rode in a Trevois during Buffalo Bill's show. His unmarked grave is somewhere within walking distance of my childhood bedroom. When I engage in filmmaking, I often find myself honoring largely unknown people and sites like this one. Bonnie's work also showcases people and places that might otherwise pass unnoticed. I remember first meeting her at the 2006 Four Seas in Chicago when she was filming Victor Vitanza's Panel to Gallery. Bonnie made and remade this impromptu film for the 2008 Manifesto issue of Kairos. What I love about that film is how she cuts together Jeff Sirk's talk over Vitanza's looping movie. Both events were going on simultaneously in different rooms, but Bonnie captures the proximity of thought that C's scheduling might have otherwise held apart. <laughs> what the mixtape offers composition is proof of how a minimalist citation of logic can achieve maximum ideational effect. Bonnie's yearly work as a volunteer at the Sundance Film Festival always pulls in cutting-edge ideas to our field's orbit. In I'm Like Professional for Kairos, Bonnie interviewed M. Dot Strange, a DIY filmmaker who merges video game effects with puppeteering and horror movies. Strange's polarizing affect on his audiences is tied to the broader libidinal relationship to filmmaking that Bonnie is exploring in her forthcoming book, Cruel Autorism. In the first 15 minutes, people started running and screaming, and their heads exploded. One thing that I want to underscore about Bonnie's filmmaking is how she has consistently challenged our field to both be part of film and reflect on the filmmaking process. In one of my favorite pieces that she did for a 2010 edited collection on YouTube for Enculturation, Bonnie asked scholars to reflect on the prospect of filming our status updates in ways that we so readily do through writing on Facebook. Performatively, via the circus, I wonder if Bonnie's filmmaking might be thought about in terms of Groucho's song, Lydia the Tattooed Lady, in the Marx Brothers movie, At the Circus. Ah, Lydia! Might the spirit of Bonnie's DIY filmmaking and advocacy of outsiders find an analog in the database of many stories of Lydia's tattoos? Isn't Lydia, after all, an encyclopedia of historical and intertextual reference? When Groucho asks us to learn a lot from Lydia, might we apply this style of learning to the unconventional people and places that Bonnie looks to for inspiration? Lydia the tattooed lady She has eyes that folks adore so And a torso even more so Lydia, oh Lydia, that encyclopedia Oh Lydia, the queen of tattoo On her back is the battle of Waterloo Beside it the wreck of the Hesperus too and proudly above waves the red, white, and blue. You can learn a lot from Lydia. Come along and see Buffalo Bill with his lasso. Just a little classic by Mendel Picasso. Here is Captain Spaulding exploring the Amazon. Here's Godiva, but with her pajamas on. La, la, la. 
If my Lydia relay is too cluttered and overwritten, might we return anyway to Bonnie's emphasis on minimalism to refresh our understanding of filmmaking? In turning finally to Amy and Bahare, I can say with certainty that both Bonnie and I have been refreshed and inspired by their collaborative work. We're not alone in this. In Alexandra Hidalgo's 2017 video book, Camro Rhetorica, a feminist filmmaking methodology for rhetoric and composition, Hidalgo draws heavily on their examples. In fact, in nearly every chapter from Hidalgo's book, she showcases footage that Amy Bahare and Sarah Arroyo originally assembled. Amy's personal connection to the circus via Disney's Dumbo got me thinking about the style of their videos. I thought about how their work shared something with the fluid, dreamlike sequences from the original 1941 cartoon. For example, the dancing elephants brought to mind Arroyo and Bahare's dancing floor from the Four Seas, Seattle. That film puts theory into motion by answering Vitanza's challenge for us to overcome our will to control. So too, Amy, Bahare, and Sarah's Coric Slam Tilt from MLA captures the whirl of elephants in their exploration of what they term desiring production. But just as the Dumbo dream sequence is often beautifully fluid, there's a fair share that is nightmarish, and even, at times, racist and sexist. Recently, in a panel celebrating Greg Ulmer's work, Sarah and Bahare pushed into the horrific realm of ISIS recruitment videos, especially the ones featuring beheadings. In looking at how other DIY filmmakers push back against such propaganda, their work courageously considers an aspect of filmmaking that most would not. But at a much more personal level, I hasten to mention Bahare's remarkable unpublished video, The Dancing Static that was featured in the 2014 season in Indianapolis. In it, she reflects on her filmmaking process while at the same time contending with the loss of her father. As someone who is also struggling with the loss of a parent, I think it's important to underscore how filmmaking allows us to include the personal connections right alongside other layers of our work. In this, Bahare's effort shares overtones with Jody Shipka's Inhabiting Dorothy project that invites the making and remaking of personal and public memory. For my part, over the years, I've often shared Bahare, Amy, and Sarah's collaborative work with my students in mid-Michigan. In the times that we live, I think it's vital that we share the collaborative and sometimes international spirit of what we do. Well, my time is short. There is much more to show and tell. Much was necessarily left on the cutting room floor. As I only have time for one refrain, a refrain to reinforce what were, admittedly, probably far too many ideas, I'll leave you with one of my dad's favorite songs from one of his favorite stage performers. Lydia, oh Lydia, say have you met Lydia? Lydia, the fat lady. She has eyes that folks adore so and a torso even more so Encyclopedia, oh Lydia, the queen of tattoo. On her back is the Battle of Waterloo. Beside it, the wreck of the Hesperus too. And proudly above waves the red, white, and blue. You can learn a lot from Lydia. La -la -la. Don't let's jump at concussions. Does anybody around here look suspicious aside from you? Uh, Mr. Carter, the manager. He's a bit of making trouble. Carter, eh? Yeah. He's a bit of making trouble. 